So bad. And I started looking at the equations in me, the equations in the other humans, and started realizing that this is the way we were designed. And depending on the variables that go into the equations that were built into us, will in many cases dictate the outcome or the output from the equation. You know, you put the variable into the equation, the equation does what it does, and the output is what the output is. And to a large degree, for human beings, for all of known recorded history, which is what, 7,000 years. Human suffering, slavery, war, religion. Look, I mean, I got it all right here. Man-induced things, things that have been induced by the gods. Humanity has been stimulated into suffering for about 7,000 years. And we've been stimulated there by either the gods or by man. And I suggest, I hypothesize that the Jews are the man that God communicated with, gave them some knowledge of how to manipulate the whole of humanity. Because... For several thousand years, we can see that humanity has been steered, guided, and manipulated, controlled, corralled, democide, genocide, money, you know, crusades, religion, and what it does to the mind, drives us to our knees, war, slavery, we got pestilence and disease and plagues from this benevolent deity that supposedly created us, and oh, well, we're plagued with these things called emotions, and then we've got all this stuff built into us by these, the supposed God, which is our engineers, all of these factors inside of us, based off of their engineering, was purposefully designed, all of this, it's crazy. This is something that is going to take me a while to really refine. And each one of these bullet items, well, here, and there's a little bit of something here, and it's stimulating. I know what I mean by putting this stuff here, but it's not the totality of it. And when you start looking into the rest of this stuff, brain firewalled off, DNA turned off, inward journey turned off, mental defects, very short lifespans, genetic defects. Uh, we got poor memory, poor vision, not great hearing. We're plagued with it. We're racked with these things called emotions. We've got these pharmacological factories in our brains that dose us with chemicals that make us feel emotions. It's the craziest thing I could think. Most people are not balanced in their left and right brain. We got that's it's crazy. It is it's shit. We're psychological, mental, emotional beings. You fuck with the psychology, the emotions, or the mind of a human being. You can knock that being so far off the center, it's not even funny. You traumatize that human being with physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, psychological abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, whatever kind of abuse. When they're young, all of a sudden, it's going to stimulate that mind into a largely negative state, and that energy is going to continue to resonate. That's the point here. I'm a terrible artist, but this is humans, and this is not hair. This is the energy that we're putting out. We put out energy from our heart and from our heads. And this energy is food for the gods. Food for our engineers, our designers, those that are in control of us. And when you look at the fact that you can get energy out of the, out of the human, it's, it's measurable. This stuff's measurable. Emotions and thoughts cause us to emit energy. Good emotions, good thoughts, positive energy. High level, high frequency energy. Low level thoughts, death, war, destruction, fear, blah, blah, whatever it is. And you you got negative emotions, negative energy. We're putting that shit out. You squeeze an individual human, it puts out energy. You squeeze the whole of humanity, we're putting out energy. This whole squeezing of humanity, putting out energy. If you've seen Greg Braden, he does a lecture years ago after 9-11 where he talks about how the energy that came out of humanity was measurable because they saw a spike in their records, they, the powers that be, have satellites up there that are measuring the electromagnetic energy of the Earth, and they saw a spike in the energy when the towers dropped. They can tell we're all connected, that we all put out energy. That is one of the most amazing finds for me, that when you start to realize that we're energy beings, and collectively, when you squeeze us, or you put us all in fear, like, for instance, 9-11, and then they saw the spike in the energy of their measurements, it's crazy. So we produce the energy food for the gods. We produce the food that the quote-unquote gods need to survive. You will either feed the gods by way of getting on your knees and worshiping in them and praying to them. That is an energy. You are putting out an energy that feeds them. They like that. 
I don't know that it's so much their egos are so inflated that they need to be worshipped as gods, so to speak, versus just that energy from you produces nourishment for them. And if, because we're, and they had to make us intelligent in order for us to do this. Now, if you're intelligent enough to recognize what's going on and you don't worship them, you don't get on your knees and get them into that prayer energy, well, there's all these variables and equa or these equations in you, in any of us, that when stimulating the silly little human beast animal, all of a sudden, we start emitting the energy. It's the craziest thing that all this shit has come to me. It's the craziest thing that I see all this shit. And when I tell you it has profoundly shifted my perspective on the human's experience, the human condition, what we are, it's just... Each one of these little areas that I've got that have information on it are all potential chapters in a freaking book, for Christ's sakes, or 15 to 20 minute lectures on the depths of what all this stuff is and how it affects the human being, and then how the people on the planet that understand this stuff control us because of these variables. I believe that this is going to sound crazy to people, but I don't give a shit. This is the shit that I've been seeing, and it makes more sense to me than anything else, especially when you question, when you get out of the box and begin to question shit. Moses. Well, these were Jews. Um, and I believe that they were given specific knowledge that keeps them a few steps ahead of the rest of the human race, keeps them with more knowledge. They've got more knowledge than we do. And I think they were given specific knowledge about how to manipulate the masses. And for that, they're favored by these gods. That's why they think they're God's chosen people, so to speak. I don't think what they communicated with and all that, I don't think it was a god. It was our engineers. Because when you look at the Ten Commandments, it's ridiculous. Thou shalt not kill, right? But then again, all the people that are running the show in the world do all the killing. Um, don't covet. That's bu and, you, and if you do in your mind, you've sinned. Bullshit. You can control your actions. The mind is a, is a virtually unreinable beast for most people. So the point is, is that the Ten Commandments that the supposed God gave to the Jews for all of humanity to find were a group of things that while they had a, the, the scent of morality and all that other stuff, doing a, it was the beginning of the, the mindfuck for the human species. Covetousness is, would be one of them. You know, <laughs> you see a hot woman that may be married to somebody, you might think to yourself, oh, I'd love to X, Y, and Z. You see somebody in a car that you'd like to have, you might think X, Y, and Z. But letting those thoughts consume you is not a healthy thing, number one. And number two, your actions are the measure of you in many respects. Therefore, your moral fabric can be measured by the fact that just because you see that hot woman who's married to somebody, uh, you're not going to go over there and go after her. And if she comes after you, you're going to say no. That's the measure. That's that's where it's at. Anyway, I don't mean to digress. Um, this is just some personal philosophical opinions that not everybody will resonate with or give a shit about. So anyway, um, at the core of it all, at the absolute core of it all, desire. Desire. The yogis, monks, gurus, they will all tell us that desire for anything is the root of all human suffering. And when you think about it, desire is a core driver in the human experience. Desire begets intention, which begets will, which begets action, which begets human experience. Without desire, we do nothing, yet desire is at the actual fucking core of what we are. And, well, it's the thing that all the spiritual people tell us for thousands of years. They've been telling us that um, free the mind from desire. Free the mind from, oh, depending on the school of philosophy you come from, it could be attachment. Maybe both of them. Attachment to what? People, family, things, women, men, your material possessions, whatever. Attachment causes suffering. Release attachment. We are wired for things. We are wired for desire because we're sentient, intelligent, critically thinking beings. Desire is going to be something that comes out of that. We were given these faculties. That's thusly desire springs forth. Yet desire is the core of human suffering. What would you create us that way for if you didn't intend for us to suffer so you could feed from us? It's like a fail-safe mechanism in case we were too intelligent to realize what these things were doing to us and stopped feeding them the prayer of the worship that they had a fail-safe mechanism of all these very or equations they put in us to ensure that they could squeeze the f*** out of us and get whatever energy they needed to to sustain themselves and f*** the little human silly beast animals. Seriously, this is ridiculous that people don't know this, that we don't know this about our own species. I mean, this planet is a genetic petri dish, period, paragraph. There's been so many iterations of life on this planet that we know of. It's, it's just, keep, life just keeps being created and wiped the fuck out. You know, think about it. Dinosaurs, giants, Nephilim, the hominids, the caveman, the Cro-Magnon, the Homo erectus. There's all kinds of shit we know is here. Something keeps creating life here and wiping it out. Kind of alludes to the imperfection of something that's up there. It's kind of crazy when you start thinking outside the box. Humanity has known suffering and slavery in one form or another. And I say this as a whole, whether it's physical bondage or mental bondage. For all of known recorded human history. That's crazy. How the fuck is that possible? And people don't think more critically about these things. In the very construct that we are put in, suffering is an absolute guarantee in this construct. But love is not. Why? Why is suffering a guarantee? But love not. See, love doesn't seem to feed the gods. If the whole planet was in a state of love for whatever reason, that doesn't feed the gods. I know that perverse sexual energy feeds the gods like dessert. But when sexual energy is rooted in love, that doesn't feed them. Therefore, when you look at the equation that in the human experience, it is a guarantee you will experience suffering. It is not a guarantee that you will experience love. There have been countless children who've been born to mothers who were 
not interested, didn't want them, didn't love them, etc., etc., etc. Or children who have been taken from their parents and raised in slavery and bondage and, and just, you know, gazillions of people on this planet throughout the course of known human history that have not known love, at least as a foundation, but suffering. We'll all know suffering. Think about this. We are designed to be stimulated. We are engineered for it. All of this is so that we can be stimulated and manipulated. We are mental, psychological, emotional beings with intelligence and awareness. All of that makes up our perception. You manipulate the mind, you manipulate the psychology, you manipulate the motions of the aware, sentient being that is, doesn't have any inherent fortification mechanisms, defense mechanisms for these core aspects of the human experience that make up the foundation of it all. Your perception of the world that you live in, your perception of yourself, your perception of other people, your perception. It's all being manipulated. It's all been manipulated. Our minds are compartmentalized. Why would that be? And we are indoctrinated as a species by religion. So you tie into all this shit, the indoctrination that religion puts into us, it induces the fear of death, it induces the fear of hell. <laughs> it's crazy. And, and when you knock the human off of center because of traumas to the mind, the psychology, the mental body, the physical body, sexual abuse, things of that nature, the human doesn't have an inherent mechanism to get back to center and get grounded again and get, you know, back to being a balanced being. No, no, no. You do any of those things I just mentioned, you can fuck up that human being for the rest of its life. The all is mind. The universe is mental. They're telling us that the whole human experience is a mental game in this universe. All of it. It's all mental. Yet, everything about what makes us up mentally, psychologically, and these emotional aspects of us that affect the mental, psychological state of us, it's crazy. And it just always seems to be the journey of the human life for a lot of people to control these emotions. It's like, wait a minute, I'm being dosed by drugs, up to and including love. What love is? Love is drugs. Drugs, dopamine. Oxytocin, shit like that, being squirted out into the brain by these glands. But there's other glands that, uh, you know, and, and things within us that produce adrenaline and the fear chemicals, cortisol, etc. Based off of stimuli, we are dosed with chemicals that we have no control over. The dosages, or it, it's like, whoa, this was fucking designed into us. So it's, it, it, when you start looking at this shit, it, how easy it is to knock the human off center, how difficult it is to get back to center, how psychologically fragile we are as a species. You knock us off center and we could get stuck in fear. And funny enough, the subconscious mind can be used to being in a fear-based state and have you resonating and buzzing into low-level fear-based energy and consciously you may not even be aware of it. And because we're psychological, mental, emotional beings that are born ignorant, even though we're intelligent, we're born ignorant, we are extremely easy to manipulate. It is extremely easy to manipulate the, the silly little beast animal human when he's ignorant. We are able to be played like marionettes. It, it's crazy. When you start looking even further at some of this, and I'm just scratching the surface to give you, we're put into a construct where everything preys on, kills, and eats the flesh of something else. At the core of nature that we are put into, everything preys upon, kills, and eats the flesh and guts and blood and bones sometimes of other living, and sometimes these beings are sentient, and it's barbaric. And then we do the same thing. Everything here in this world, virtually, is food for something else that's stronger than it. And so are we. We're just food. We just feed... What, what feed what's, what's stronger than us isn't necessarily in this world. And we feed it energy. And that's why we are built and designed and stimulated to suffer. That's why all of this shit points to suffering. All of this shit points to suffering. We women, male, female, drawn to each other. Energetically, we're drawn to each other. The positive energy of the male and the negative energy of the male. Like batteries, not good and bad. Just... That we're designed to be drawn to the female. Uh, the female is designed to be drawn to the male. Yet, this attachment will create suffering. Attachment to material possessions for some, maybe. So, these yogis and monks and gurus seem to all concur that you've got to release desire, release attachment, release thought, stop the activity of the mind. The mind is all... And they always tell us how bad the mind is. It's, it's a terrible thing. The mind will... Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, yeah, the mind will play tricks on you. And that the key to no suffering is to release desire, to release attachment, to release thought, and stop all mind activity. Now these are the base, this is the base human programming. Some of this stuff is actually what makes us sentient. Aspects of these, some of these things are part of what makes us sentient. And that's the feeling, perceiving, aware mind. The conscious and subjective experience. Release desire, release attachment, release thought, re stop the mind activity. Watch the thoughts go by. Don't acknowledge the thoughts, don't give them energy, and then you won't suffer. But desire, core of human suffering. Release desire. And then, so, you start putting all these equations that are built into us, and then you start looking at how they affect the human. Start looking at what the variables that are fed into these equations that exist in us by other humans, by the powers that be that are in control, trying to corral all of humanity, by the gods. It's crazy. And all of these are very real. All of these are very legitimate. And there's probably ones that I haven't thought of yet. This is crazy. This is crazy. Let's just look at this. So we're mental beings. As I said, the all is mind. The universe is mental. We're psychological beings. Yet, in that makeup, what makes up our psychology 
is compartmentalized. So the aspect of us that runs the show the most is the subconscious mind. Yet we don't have any direct access to the subconscious mind, at least innately, that we're aware of. Can it be developed? They say it can. Uh, but we're not wired with it. Why would we not be wired with an innate knowledge of how to get into an aspect of our consciousness that profoundly runs the show and is responsible for what we experience? Why would that be cut off from us? Why would we not be in control of what goes in there? Seriously, think about that for a second. Why would we not have direct access to the part of our own consciousness that is responsible for running 95% of the human experience? And when you learn about what the subconscious mind actually is, what it does, and how powerful it actually is, and the fact that we don't have direct access to it innately, and most humans won't, will go through their entire life having no idea of what this aspect of them is, let alone how to communicate with it, get in there, remove things that don't serve us. Because what goes into the subconscious mind largely determines a lot about the human experience and the human's condition. So we seek to kill an aspect of our psyche. We are blocked off from aspects of our psyche. Not completely and totally. It's just we don't know how to get in there. And it takes a lot of work. And then what we actually have the most direct access to is this conscious mind, which only runs about 5% of the show for the human experience. Why are we, and why is our awareness relegated to the five percent that's here when so much of what we are and what guides and or what steers the ship resides here that doesn't make sense to me and it can be a journey of a lifetime to get into the subconscious mind it can be the journey of years to get into the subconscious mind to perhaps replace things that are in there that don't serve us why were we made this way and then the emotional think about it you ever done something stupid or that you wouldn't have otherwise done when you were head over heels in love getting dosed with that dopamine oxytocin you ever done something that you would never otherwise do or Say something you never would have otherwise said when you were extremely mad or extremely angry. I'm getting doses of that adrenaline and cortisol, whatever else. So for the human, we have an experience, and that equals a chemical being released in our brain, which creates that feeling in our emotion. Or we have a thought that generates a chemical in our brain that generates a feeling or an emotion within us. And it is easy as hell to manipulate most humans with emotional stimuli. Then when you have a human that's got these variables in them and they're born ignorant, and if their parents are ignorant, this makes us individually and as a whole extremely vulnerable to manipulation by forces from beyond this world and our own kind that knows more about you than you that can control you. On top of all this, born ignorant, aware, sentient, we have little to no instinct as well. We really, really don't as far as innate knowledge of the environment in which we were put into. We see that a lot in the animal world where they have a lot of instinct. Even though we see animals teaching their young certain things, there's a lot of instinct that we have been able to determine is wired into these animals. We're part animals, yet we have very little in the way of instinct. It's weird how this works. We don't have any inherent defense mechanisms or fortifications for these aspects of ourselves that are the core of the human experience. You know, you fuck up this. <laughs> the human's life is just dramatically shifted and changed. Why would we be made in this way? without any inherent defense or fortification mechanisms of these aspects of ourselves. I mean, you kick a dog and it starts shaking a lot to shake out the stress of it. But for humans, we don't really work that way. You kick us, we're traumatized, damaged psychologically, mentally, emotionally. Interesting. And then we have no control. Can we learn control of all these aspects of us? Yes. Can we learn control of the emotions, the psychology, blah, 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 blah? blah. Sure. But each one of them takes years to learn in many respects. Some of them can be a lifetime journey, healing the human mind from profound psychological, mental, emotional trauma, damage, blah, 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 blah. That can be a journey of a lifetime. Why were we born or built this way? When you start looking at the way the world works and how all this shit is, is, is coming, you, you, you see the things that cause abuses and traumas and neglect really affect the psyche, the mental, emotional, psychological body of the human being, individually and us as a whole. And where are we getting so much of this abuse, trauma, and neglect from church, from parents? Nobody wants to talk about that. Parents can get away with doing some of the most abhorrent shit to their offspring. People hide behind that shit and absolutely abuse, traumatize, and neglect their children during these developmental stages of the human being while we're being programmed because we're designed and born in a way that our mind is in the theta state, our brain, so we need to be programmed, indoctrinated by our parents. Well, seeing how man knows about how that programming and indoctrination process takes place within the human, well, the powers that be have sought to also get in there and get their programming into your subconscious mind. Um, that's what advertising is. That's what all this stuff is that you see on TV. And they've known that. They've known this about humans and development and traumatizing or getting the things into the subconscious mind. They know how deep into the subconscious mind these things go and that we are unaware of it, we have no control of it, and once it gets in there, it's with us. And that the journey to remove the thing Things that they plant into our minds is a long journey for most people. Abuse, trauma, neglect, it's all pervasive in the human experience. It's not something that's very widely talked about, and it's not necessarily for everybody, but on the whole, there is abuse, trauma, neglect, and a lot of unsavory shit that traumatizes the mental, psychological, physiological, or uh, mental, physical, psychological, emotional, and sexual traumas, uh, the all pervasive in the human experience. War causes lots of psychological, mental trauma, physical trauma. All this affects the human psychology, the emotional body, the mental body, the perception. 
And it induces negative emotion, negative thinking, negative perception. Therefore, we're putting out this negative energy, feeding the gods. Something else that's interesting when you start thinking about it. We're an intelligent race of sentient aware beings, right? Somehow, we continually and perpetually go through cycles as a species. And we can see this. Perpetual cycles of fear, because it's easier to control and manipulate the human as a whole or in large groups when they're in fear. We seem to continue to perpetuate the same cycles or go through the same things as if we're not learning. It doesn't make any sense. There's a reason these equations were built into us. There's a reason for all of this stuff that does not elude to benevolent deity creating us. This eludes to us being designed to be a source of food. And slaves, when you think about the fact that, where the hell is it that I put on there? Everything here, everything here in this construct is food for something else that is stronger than it. And so are we. We are food for the gods. Like aquaponics. Fish in the water, the plants that sit on top of the water, like the mossy stuff, they've got constant water. They've got nutrients from the fish shit. The fish procreate, and you've got this sustainable source of food. Well, that's like us. We're perpetually recycled. They tell us we're reincarnated. I don't think it's reincarnation at all. I think it's just this soul trap that we've all been caught in that keeps us being recycled back in. When you start looking at this shit, seriously, I'm just going to quickly go over it. The brain's firewalled off. The DNA is turned off. The inward journey's firewalled off for most people. The third eye is shut off in most people. Now, we may, we may be born with it on, but the world turns this shit off. We have compartmentalized minds. We live very short lifespans. We are born profoundly ignorant, and the totality of the knowledge that you will get in this world, or, um, uh, when you're growing up, will come from your parents and uh, well, the mechanisms in the world that are trying to indoctrinate your mind. As a species, we have all these mental defects, psychosis, schizophrenia. We have psychopathy. Medical science has recorded, it's documented, 4,000 known genetic flaws and defects in the human genome. Why would that be? That's pretty sloppy work. We have poor memories. Few have photographic memories, and when they do, they are anomalies. We have poor vision. We have hearing that isn't all that good. We are racked with these things called emotions. We have these pharmacological factories in our brains. We have a right-left brain imbalance, as most of us on this planet. Long periods of sustained mental work are extremely draining to the human. Why are we designed that inefficiently? Intense emotion or em emotional charges are extremely draining for the human. Why is that part of the... You know, mental and mind. What do we got here? Mental, mind, perception-based beings. The all, oh, we're, so we're mental beings, we're psychological beings, we're emotional beings, and we're all that shit's extremely manipulatable in the human when we're ignorant. We have no inherent defense or fortification mechanisms to defend or get back to center when these mental, em uh, emotional, uh, psychological, where's psychological, it's up here somewhere, psychological, oh, there it is. You know, if you fuck with or manipulate the human psychology, the mind of the ignorant, you can own them. Psychological, mental, or emotional trauma can damage the human being profoundly. And we don't have, as I've said a couple times, any innate or inherent mechanisms to get back to center. Why would we be created in that way? Because when we got damaged, so to speak, through this psychological factory we've got in us, that, oh, we're in pain, oh, gonna get on your knees and worship, pray to your God, to give them the energy. There's, there's reasons for this, people. Our language has been manipulated. I mean, we can tell that from the, uh, oh, been manipulated by the gods and by man. And then, you know, look at the Genesis story of what they did in Babylon. The Babylonian uh, story of the gods coming down here and dividing our language. Our, our language, why is that a vulnerability for us like this? Because this is the very mechanism by which we communicate. And when you realize that words are spells and what we're doing, we don't have any innate knowledge of the environment in which we're born. Think about it. The laws of energy, the laws of attraction, the laws of vibration, the laws of math, the laws of frequency. Yet we're thrust into an environment where we are aware, sentient, intelligent beings, yet we're not giving any knowledge of that no innate instinct. And it's crazy because we should probably have some of that because we're half animal. And you just kind of got to wonder, was whatever instinct we may have had within us as the animal half of us, was it taken from us? You start looking at these equations and these things that are built into the human, the engineering of the human. Oh, also with these genetic flaws, apparently there is a fusing of the second and third genome in the double helix of the human DNA. And that is not found anywhere else in nature. Nowhere. No plant, no bird, no animal, no reptile, no sea creature, no nothing. Nowhere else in nature has humans, in as much as they have sought to find it, found any other species on this planet that has the genomes fused in the way that ours is. That alludes to manipulation. That alludes to these gods being our... Uh, something. It alludes to some shit. And we start realizing that uh, there are 4,000 known genetic flaws, and that it alludes to the fact that they just did not do very precision work down to the molecular level for humans. It's a reason why we live very short lifespans. The work that these beings that created and engineered and created us, that they did, was relatively sloppy in a lot of ways, or these genetic defects or genetic flaws that medical science has found, there wouldn't be so many of them. Again, all of this alludes to the fact that we were created to be a source of food, that we were designed and created to be stimulated, that we were engineered specifically for the purposes that I'm putting forth here. But people would rather sit in front of the TV and watch Kardashian, but there's some dumb brain-dead trivial bullshit. But then again, maybe immersing yourself in that stuff is a sweet escape from the brutal reality of what we are and why we are. Seriously, why would you make a race of beings that are literally half animal, half human? We're like chimeras. When you think about it, did Source create us? What are we? A lot of us don't know. I'm not sure I know. But I think I know why we are. 
And I don't believe it to be as much of the spiritual bullshit as we're told that so God or source can experience life and experience things through our perspective, individual life experience, blah, blah, blah. I think that's all bullshit. I think this is more true than anything else. Prove me wrong. Seriously. Prove me wrong. I'm going to do some deep dives on this stuff. And there's more here that I don't have. There, there's, there's more here. This is just all I could get under the wall with the paper that I've got. I, I need to find another mechanism or medium to put all this together and spread it out so I can see it more clearly and add more stuff. I'm telling you, this starts to fill up quickly. And if you, I mean, I've run, out of, I've run out of space, most more or less. There's just so much more to add. So I need more paper. You know, I need to get a wall, a whiteboard, and just start putting it all together. This is the best I can do right now with what I've got. This is how my mind is working. Launching out of my body, seeing things, experiencing things and coming back and processing it all. This is the shit that my mind goes to. Go figure.